Love is not bulletproof, we wake up every morning with smiles on our faces and dreams for the day. Then life happens. It begins to rain, the sun gets harsh, someone pours hot coffee on us, and so on. Sometimes, the day gets so bad that it feels like all hell was let loose on us. But did you know something similar applies to every aspect of our lives, including relationships? Our relationships start beautiful and promising, flamboyant and clairvoyant. We're over the moon in the first few weeks. We picture ourselves in a happily ever after scenario. For most people, that means a happy home full of love, laughter, wealth, and pleasure. But it doesn't always end like that. Like our well-planned days getting ruined, relationships are prone to failures, feelings tend to fade, and that sexual drive at the beginning eventually wanes. Beautiful relationships often collapse when sex reaches an all-time low. Every relationship has that point where partners struggle to find themselves aesthetically pleasing or even sexually arousing. As things go sour and partners seem to have had the fill of their own company, sexual disagreements become the bone of contention. Some couples grow out of it stronger, but unfortunately, others don't. Many relationships have ended because of sexual issues. But this shouldn't be the case. While a thousand and one things can affect our sex lives, the missing component is often communication. And that's the focus of this summary. In the following chapters, you'll learn how to communicate your sexual needs and dissatisfactions with your partner and find lasting solutions. You'll also see the common causes of declining sexual drive, so you can arm yourself to overcome them. The spark isn't really just a spark. It's twin flames, emotional intimacy and physical intimacy. The joyful beginnings bring us the best memories, which we seek to uphold. As mentioned earlier, the beginning of every relationship experiences its most flamboyant times. Couples are magnetically drawn to each other. Their sex drive is on fire, and the smallest things cause a spark. The body scent of one another draws couples. Merely sitting beside or leaning on your partner can result in sex. It takes nearly zero effort to get your partner turned on. Sometimes, merely seeing a sex scene from a movie, looking at their bare skin or seeing them come out of the shower makes you paint a naked picture of them in your head, and it feels like you should eat them raw. These only seem to be mere happy beginnings. As the story unfolds in the opening months or years, you or your partner may begin to lose a great amount of interest such that their presence no longer moves you an inch. And it will take a lot more than non-contact seductive gestures to turn back. They, at this point, must have noticed the obvious, yet they can't spell it out they'd rather continue to live under happy pretenses. But why can't it be deliberated upon? Why can't it be discussed? The answer is people have never found it comfortable to talk about sex. Talking about sex so comfortably and openly, like discussing the Kardashians or your favorite sports team, is perceived as morally degrading and unbecoming of a decent person. Many people are even shy to discuss sex one-on-one -on -one with a therapist. But it's dangerous. Persistently shying away from sexual communication when dissatisfied will only lead to more frustration. The most common way to avoid discussing sex is by faking an orgasm. They assume pretending to be satisfied will make their partner happy and all will be well, but that's the wrong way to see it. You only end up hurting yourself. And it's the last thing your loving partner wants. Stop entertaining sexual fantasies that contradict the demands of real life. Most often, People picture sex like something your mind always swings to in split seconds. We see movie sex scenes where a lead role arrives home from work, and their spouse runs toward him, kissing him intimately and passionately. Then he'll take her to the bedroom, where they'll make out pleasurably and satisfactorily. The movies, in most cases, don't reflect reality, they act on scripted fantasies. After returning home after a long day, considering the exhaustion and fatigue, such a person would most likely not be in the mood for sex. They'll need a warm bath, a decent meal, and peaceful sleep to recuperate. They're most likely not in the mood to engage you in what you're initiating. Another fantasy that clouds our judgments is assuming the next door neighbor or some distant couple with a good reputation has a perfect relationship. We try to be like them, seeking counseling and applying what works for them in our homes. But this always turns out bad, as it most certainly never works. Every couple is unique. The people you admire also have their lapses. They might have found a way to deal with them or live in ways that make them less visible to the world. It's ironic to expect relationships to be a bed of roses. Situations change, and things happen physically and psychologically that may cause your partner to change toward you or not be responsive and active as they used to be. Career problems, 
financial challenges, sudden deaths, and the like are everyday situations that threaten the mental health of either partner and could make them unavailable for sex. The presence of toddlers and teenagers also limits couples from having sex as freely as they used to. The responsibilities of catering to them aside, people don't want children interrupting them in action. Did you know? Sex can relieve a headache, it releases tension, which relaxes the blood vessels in the brain. Sex talk is like going to a therapy session. Having discussed why couples feel shy or consciously withdraw from sex talk, here are a few ways to facilitate effective and fruitful communication. Step 1. Understand why you're discussing it People become nervous about speaking out because they imagine their partner will misunderstand or misinterpret their thoughts. They fear the aim of initiating the conversation will get defeated and could result in a full-blown grudge. Maintain your position that you're initiating that talk not to worsen the situation but to bring you both to a mutual understanding. Sometimes, fear is only in your head, so it might help to begin the discussion by simply saying you want to talk. And if you're on the other end of the conversation, try to understand your partner rather than be defensive. A good way to start is just to sit and listen. Step 2. Discuss it collectively as a team understand that you're not the only one facing this challenge in your relationship. A solution for you is a solution for your partner. Do not blame your partner. Seek ways to resolve your sexual challenge and come back stronger. Step 3. Be polite and soft in your address. Choose careful words so as not to be offensive. A good way to ensure this is to be fully present when talking. Don't open the conversation when busy or not in the mood. It's also a good idea to ask your partner when is the best time to talk. Step 4. Use the I pronoun to avoid trading blames. Avoid being directly accusative. Like telling them, you did this. You did that, or you're supposed to do this and not do that. Use expressions like I missed you doing it this way. I wish you had done this or that, I'd have been grateful, etc. Another way of initiating communication is to compliment your partner by randomly appraising their dress sense, appreciating their beauty or attractiveness, and giving sexual compliments to tease them. Initiate sex when you're in the mood. Expect compliance but be open to rejection. Initiation involves either partner making advances toward the other to have sex. People have different views as to who should first initiate sex. Ideally, no one is under obligation to make the first move. It is a shared responsibility, a balanced initiation process. The reason people feel nervous about initiating sex is the fear of rejection. Nobody wants to be turned down, especially in a manner that hurts or makes them feel embarrassed. People battle with the courage to approach their partners for sex, and the thought of rejection even worsens it because rejection places you in quite an uncomfortable mood. To avoid painful rejection, you should know how to initiate politely. Poor initiation techniques will only irritate your partner, making your efforts futile. Here is a list of things you can do to set the right atmosphere. Take care of them everyone loves to be taken care of. Making your partner feel like they're the most important person in the world can warm their hearts and increase their sexual attraction to you. Play with them you can win a person's heart by constantly making them smile and laugh. The amusement they get from you is enough to get them to cling to you and find you sexually attractive. You can initiate sex through laughing and playful behavior. Create an emotional bond slash connection sex is as emotional as it's physical. As a matter of fact, some people won't feel sexually attracted to you if they aren't emotionally committed. So, create a conducive emotional environment by complimenting your partner, helping them, showing concern, etc. Regular dates and surprises also contribute to filling their emotion tanks. Physical intimacy We all get aroused by physical touch on sensitive areas of our bodies. You can make it easy for your partner by telling them the areas you love to be touched, such as your neck, cheeks, behind your knees, your breasts, or your ears. And how you love to be touched, squeezing, rubbing, spanking, massaging, caressing, or tickling. You should be able to communicate all these desires. Give feedback when you've initiated or engaged in sex. Remember, feedback does not equate to constructive criticism, nor does it only stand for orally responding to a question or statement. Feedback in intimacy is your body language and your reaction to sex advances, moves, and even the sex itself. It includes your response to sensitive touches on parts of your body, talking about what's happening, how you love it, your dos and don'ts of sex, etc. Do not assume your partner knows your feelings, likes, and dislikes. You know yourself better, so ensure to communicate. Your partner may read different meanings to your body language during sex and foreplay. For instance, your moaning may sound rather fake to someone else, hence, 
the need to communicate. You can yell that you're enjoying it, ask them to do more, and mention where and what to do. Do not be a silent type in bed. It puts your partner in a difficult position to know how you're feeling. Feedback is an essential element of sex communication. Also, feedback should be devoid of offensives. Don't tell them, you're a terrible kisser, bad breath, or you completely suck at it. Feedback should be positive to keep the flow. Sometimes you won't like the words or actions of your partner during sex. It's best not to interrupt the session, hold your complaints until later. You can spell it out to them carefully and politely, stating your positive intentions for discussing it and suggesting how they should do it. If you have a quiet partner, you should be proactive by requesting feedback. It shouldn't be a question that puts them in a difficult position to answer or go numb. So, narrow your questions. Make them simple to answer and non-provocative. The following questions are red flags because they're too vague and can make your partner feel bad. Avoid these at all costs. What do you want? How are you feeling? What should I do to make you orgasm right now? Manage your conversations so they don't turn into conflicts. Conflicts are inevitable, but partners must manage them and wax stronger afterward. And note that having conflicting opinions does not translate to incompatibility. At some point in your relationship, you might notice your partner blocks you out, effectively giving you the silent treatment, ceasing communication, and putting up a wall. All you have to do is to provide them with a much-needed break. They need it to calm their head and start fresh. Insisting on arguing about it and defend your course will only escalate things. You can talk about it later when everyone is calm, refreshed, and probably already thought about it. Don't bring up the topics or issues that led to an argument in the past. Put them behind you, and don't talk about them again. Let them go. If any situation should arise in the future, you shouldn't bring up accumulated grudges from the past to judge your partner. Don't remind them how horrible they've been since you've been together. Another approach toward reconciliation is to apologize when necessary, regardless of fault. You can show you've moved on, and want it behind you. They'll feel loved and see the need to forgive you almost immediately. Plan to avoid future reoccurrences of similar scenarios. You can discuss a long-lasting solution by defining your purpose and knowing the agreeable positions for both of you. You can ask yourself self-evaluative questions like these. What is there to learn from this? What do I understand about you better now? What have I discovered about myself? How can we improve from here? Having put these into practice, you can start to reconnect and establish a much stronger bond than ever before. If your problems are sex-related, plan for them. Set your priorities, discuss what you want before you get involved. You could also make a sex schedule for the most convenient moments. Discuss how often you want to have sex, and talk about your sex fantasies and if they're achievable. Then set a plan to live out those fantasies. Conclusion The joy of every couple is to see their relationship thrive in the most comfortable way for both parties. We all desire to live well, explore our fantasies, and watch our relationship blossom into something worth emulating. Things, however, don't always go as expected. Challenges set in, our differences become more glaring, the foundation gets shaken, and the relationship is threatened with damnation. But it's comforting to know you're not alone. The couple next door has the same experience, it's just more tailored to their unique situation. Hopefully, this summary has shown you practical ways to keep love and sex alive in your relationship. Let's recap a few things. Finances, careers, parenting, and everything that modern life requires contribute to affecting sex drive. However, you can rekindle a dying sexual passion through effective communication with your partner. It helps to eliminate the sexual fantasy in our heads that love and sex are supposed to be perfect like it appears in the movies. Identify your partner's arousal style, know what turns them on. The spontaneous types can get aroused just by looking at a kissing scene in a movie, and the responsive types are only stimulated when the sex is engaged. Learn to initiate sex. It can be difficult, considering you risk rejection, but you never know until you try. Also, learn not to take rejection personally and try to understand it from your partner's perspective. You can always discuss it if the rejection becomes too frequent. Try this explore this summary with your partner. In your solitary moments, identify the problems you face while initiating sex and write them down. Sit together and address each concern and sex desire individually. Discuss how you will overcome the bad and achieve the good ones. Engage in sex conversations with your partner daily until you are accustomed to discussing them freely without feeling uneasy.